I'm out here playing music and where I'm playing music from is playing from right here. This lapel right here is transmitting to there. This is how you do wireless audio. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. DJ Rick Webb here and of course you guys saw from the intro bit, we're gonna be talking about how to do wireless speakers the correct way, the way that's not gonna get you drop out and the way that's the most professional way that I know how to do it. But before we do that, gotta give you guys updates on the warehouse as always. So if you see all the boxes around me, we have both lighting inventory everywhere. We have tubes, we have IR4s, we have S4s, we have, I don't even know what stands, all this stuff. We literally got a whole entire freight load of both lighting gear. Shout is here right now going through every individual package and quality checking them. So we're making sure everything is in working order. Of course, these came all the way from China and you know, a lot of times the stuff doesn't work. So we're going through checking them, quality checking them so that way when we ship them out of here to you, they work. We also have some broken ones because you know, when they come from China, they get destroyed. <laughs> gonna be quality checked by us here. Now I can't speak for UPS that's gonna be shipping it to you guys from us, but at least it's not going all the way around the world. And you know, we have fast shipping uh, links down below to Bo Flying USA. If you guys wanna pick up any of the lights, it's all linked down below. But let's see, what else we got? Um, I don't know if I updated, but we got new flooring in. Look at that. New flooring's in, the bathrooms are done. We got our nice little kitchen area starting to come together. I'm gonna be working on this today. This is a butcher block. I'm gonna build a little frame and that's gonna be a table that sits here. Also gonna mount up a couple TVs. Yeah, it's coming along. So let's talk wireless audio in terms of how do you get your audio from the source Today we're gonna to use a Yamaha six channel mixer to a speaker, which today we're gonna to use a battery powered speaker. That way I can walk around and show you guys how far away the coverage works on this. But let's go through a backlog because I have spent thousands of dollars trying to create wireless audio systems over the years. And turns out the best solution is actually to just use the awesome wireless mics that all of you already have. So we'll get into that in a second. But for background, I have tried the Alto Professional Stealth Wireless System. Both this one and the better one. I've sold that one since. This sucks. This is good for like wireless audio from here to say there, 25 feet, 50 feet, maybe in, but this thing's terrible. I've tried the Sennheiser, this little guy right here. This thing actually was pretty good for the most part, but then again, yes, it's only good for about here to there. That sucks as well. So what I've landed on, and I've learned this from the pros in the industry, is to just use a wireless microphone in reverse. So if you think about it, say this lapel right here, this lapel is, transmitting audio to the receiver and then the receiver goes to your speakers. All we're gonna do is use it in reverse. So what I have here for this demo, and you can use just about any awesome wireless mic that you might have as long as it has a scanning feature. And by that I mean you can turn the mic on and you can scan, it'll tell you exactly how many open frequencies there are in the room. Not like a scan and it finds the best one. I would not use those. Use one that actually scans and gives you a list of available frequencies that you can look through. And I'll give you some tips on how to select the best frequency as well. What I have for myself though, we use all Audio-Technica 3000 fourth gens. These are the same as the Shure QLXDs and the Sennheiser G4s. They're actually the exact same hardware that is made in China. They're just rebranded for whatever brand that it is. But we use all Audio-Technica 3000 fourth gen. We got like, I don't even know, probably like 20 of these mics in, at this point. But all I did was buy one of the lapel units. So right here is my lapel. Here's the main unit and here are the two little antennas that come with it. Now I did a couple modifications here to make this work. You need two additional things. First one is optional, but I upgraded to half wave antennas. These are quarter wave antennas. These are half wave. They're gonna give you better reception. Self-explanatory. These are actually sure half wave antennas and I will link all this down below too if you guys wanna pick up the exact kit that I'm using. And then the piece that makes it all work, this is a lapel adapter to quarter inch. And this is what they use for like wireless guitars and stuff at events. So this is going to replace the lapel. So we're gonna unscrew the lapel right here and I'm one handed, so bear with me. And we're gonna screw the lapel in, or the quarter inch cable into this. And now the way the system is going to work is we're gonna have audio playing from this Yamaha mixer. This is just for this demo, but it could be whatever you have. This could be your SZ, this could be your 1000, your Rev 7. All you need to do is get an output, plug it in. So I'm gonna take this quarter inch stereo out right here. That's gonna feed to the lapel. And then we're gonna take the 
the receiver here. So this is the transmitter, the lapel transmitter body pack. It's going to transmit to the receiver here. So we're going to put that all together and then we're going to use an XLR cable to link this to the speaker. And this is exactly what we did. If you guys watched my personal wedding gig log from that at the ceremony, we did a wireless speaker on the opposite side so that we had a stereo surround sound almost at the ceremony. And this is what we did. We plugged in a lapel over on our DJ booth and we put the receiver box on the other LD Systems Maui 28 on the other side and that picked up the signal and it was perfectly in sync. There was pretty much no delay, honestly. It was honestly perfect. And that's another thing with this system, there's practically no delay. With the Sennheisers, you do have a delay. With these, it's a similar one, but the signal coverage is just not as good. And I'm gonna show you guys right here that we were going to go on a walk and we're gonna probably get about 300 feet away before we start losing any signal on this setup. So I'm gonna take my receiver box here. I'm gonna plug in my half wave antennas on the back. Now I got my big antennas ready to go. And then I'm gonna have this XLR cord. And I'm just gonna take the output and plug it into my Mackie Fump Go speaker here. So again, for the purpose of this video, I have the mic plugged into a Jackery because we're gonna go on a little bit of a walking adventure with this setup to see how far away we can get away from the source. I need to go get a laptop to plug in some audio to this as well. But I wanna show you guys how you sync your microphone. So let's turn on the Audio-Technica. We're gonna go ahead and turn on this lapel as well. And um, this is what I'm talking about when I say a mic that can scan. So if I click in here, I can go down to group scan and I have one through 10 of groups that I can scan through. So I typically use eight or 10. That's just my personal preference. You can use one, two, three, doesn't matter. Then you can do the threshold and you can do normal, high or low. So typically I'm doing normal. If I get low results in terms of I don't get many channels back, I will go to high. So I'm gonna scan right now. It's gonna scan for 24 possible frequencies to use. It's got 17, we're good. So if I wanted to retry this though and go to high, boom, it's gonna do more channel frequencies that it can pick up. It got 17 as well. Not a good example there, but that is basically what we're looking for. And now this is why I like to have a channel list. I'm gonna select a channel that is in a grouping of multiple. Now we have a lot of frequencies available here, but like for instance, this 529 down here at the bottom, I wouldn't select that. But up here I have two 527s. I might select one of those. That 523 is kind of out by itself. There's two 522s. There's two 550s or 520s. And then there's 501, 502, 503. So I'm going to choose something in the grouping. So 510. 01, 500 really, 500's got three of them right there. So a lot of times I would choose wherever there's a grouping of three, I choose the middle one. But you could also go down here where you got 501, 502, 503. You got a nice cluster of frequencies together that are available. Now I'm not an expert in microphone fields. If you wanna to talk to an expert, talk to Ben Stowe over at NLFX Pro. That dude is a genius when it comes to wireless mics and it's a lot of the tech and the knowledge that I have is from him. But my rule of thumb that I teach all my guys because it's a simple kind of thing that tell them is to choose a frequency in the middle of a grouping that is your best bet. Another tip is to wait to scan and select a frequency until you are like right on top of when you need it. I have a couple venues that are red flagged in our system as having trouble with wireless microphones. Basically what we do is we will wait to scan the microphones in until like right before the ceremony. So like during prelude, we'll scan them in right then. So if you wait and then you scan at the last minute, it is a better chance that it's gonna find an available frequency. Like I said here, I'm gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna to select the middle 500 one. That's just what I want today. We're gonna to go to sync. We're gonna tell it to change the frequency. And now we're going to press scan or sync, sorry. And we're gonna press sync on our lapel here. We're gonna line up the IR windows. There's like an IR window on the back here. This is an IR and an IR. You line those up, connecting and boom we're good to go. That's another nice thing about having a nice microphone setup. There's these windows on the back. This is an IR window and this is an IR window. So it auto updates those, which is nice. All right, so let's get to showing you guys how this works. All right, so we are fully set up to show you guys how this works and we're completely wireless. So I have uh, my audio is actually coming through this Bluetooth right here. And you can see right there, it's coming through on the levels on the Yamaha. So basically this comes in on line three, four right here. And that could be basically, this could be any audio input
input that you have. It could be your microphones as well. The output goes to the stereo out here. You could also do the phone if you wish, but I prefer the stereo out or the group out. And then that goes to the lapel. So right there's the showing you guys the lapel. So this, I'm just gonna lay in a very open place, either up on top of my DJ table or something where the antenna is up in the air. And then that transmits over to our receiver. As you can see right there, those are our audio levels. That's our signal levels. And we can turn the music up from here. So now we're gonna go on a journey to see how far away we can get with full audio coverage. All right guys, so the audio is right there. I have my little handy dandy carrying rig here with the jackery and everything. Yes, if I had an EV, it would be a lot better, but we're gonna go on a walk outside the warehouse, out back. We're gonna see how far we can go. So again, we're inside the warehouse right there and I'm gonna go for a walk outside the warehouse. All right, there you go. So inside the warehouse over there, I have power lines and everything that can cause interference out back here. We're playing music beautifully with, I don't even know if you can see that, but we have full signal. So we're probably about 300 feet right now from the door to the warehouse. Let's keep going. Let's see how far we can go. All right, I have no clue how far we are now. All the way down there in the far door is where the audio is coming from. And uh, let's see, our signal, it's about a half strength right now. So definitely pushing the boundaries of how far you can go with this, but it's crystal clear. I don't know if you can hear this, but. We're about at half strength right now, maybe, maybe a little less. And we're probably a thousand feet away from the transmitter. That's how you do wireless speakers. But you know, we can't stop there. We gotta figure out where it ends. So I just noticed when I, if I step in front of these antennas, so if I block with my body, the, between the antennas and where it's coming from, I do get dropout. We're definitely probably at the maximum, but still very, very impressive. Like I said, over there at the trailer, we're 300 feet away, perfectly clear audio all the way through. You tell me an event where you need wireless audio more than 300 feet. And that, that doesn't even stop it. Like if you go, in, we're going through brick walls here to get outside. This is, this is very good. If you have line of sight in a room, it's gonna be perfectly clear. Just like if you had a wireless microphone. All right, so let's go back into the warehouse. And let me answer some commonly asked questions. All right, so back in the warehouse real quick. I wanna go through some commonly asked questions. One question I got is what if you wanna run multiple speakers? Well, you don't need another lapel. You actually use the same lapel and you just have multiple receivers and you set them to the exact same frequency. So you will have to manually set the other ones as well. But that's how you can literally run like three, four, five, six wireless speakers all off of one lapel. Another commonly asked question is what about the batteries? Now I do not have it just yet, but they do sell uh, basically powered bricks that you can plug into where the AA batteries are. It's basically like a lapel power pack. And basically it's just, it looks like two lapels, but it's got a wire that comes off of it and you plug it into the wall and then you have permanent power run to your lapel. I have a similar setup at home for the camera I use in my podcast setup where the battery that plugs into the camera has a cord and it plugs into the wall as well. So that is how you basically can have permanent power to the lapel. And lastly, the last question is related to running wireless mics and this at the exact same time. And that just comes down to scanning and making sure none of yours are on the exact same frequency. So you would be running your mics on like 503, 510, 520, 400, whatever you got. And then the wireless system be running it on its own dedicated system. Just like if you're running two, three, four wireless mics, you gotta have them all on different channels. That's how that works. You know, I just realized at the beginning of the video, I just talked about having a really good wireless mic system. And I forgot to like kind of talk about because it's it's been around for a while now since 2018 when t-mobile bought the 600 band if you are still using mics that operate in the 600 bands even if they scan please do yourself a favor and upgrade to some newer mics the new mics operate in the 400 to 500 hertz range that is where the free space is currently if you got mics that are operating in the 600 hertz range which was basically all of the mics prior to 2018 that's when that's where most of them operated. You need to upgrade your mics and get some mics that scan. That's how you're gonna avoid any frequency dropout or interference. You gotta buy some nice quality good mics and that sucks because back in the day we used to be able to get GTD microphones and they worked flawlessly, no problems. 
those days are over. We are in the area now of where the frequency band we have to work with is getting tighter and tighter, not to mention the amount of wireless devices and communication devices that exist. I mean, everybody's phone has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 6, and all this crazy stuff, and just about anything and everything nowadays has a Wi-Fi antenna in it. I mean, we have Wi-Fi in all of our lighting. We're doing wireless audio. You got Bluetooth antennas. You got more and more. You got 5G. You got Wi-Fi 6. So we're operating in a world that's getting more and more competitive when it comes to wireless frequency stuff. So you need to be investing in really good wireless microphone systems. So again, I use the Audio-Technica 3000 fourth gen. That's just my personal preference. Uh, these mics run anywhere from $800 to $900 a piece. They're not cheap. And uh, you know, there's Sure options out there. There's Sennheiser G4 options. All those are great. But yeah, you want to buy something that has a nice scanning feature like these. But anyways, that's all for this little video going over how to do wireless audio up to like 600 feet. I mean, this is the most impressive system I've ever put together. And it's amazing. It's tools that we already had. All we needed to do was buy the right cable. And I will also say some of these companies make cables that go to XLR as well. I like the quarter inch option though, personally, that's just my personal preference. Let me know in the comments down below, are any of you guys doing this exact setup or any of you guys doing it at your events? I know this has been around for a while. I'm just now jumping on the ship and getting rid of all of these crappy pieces of crap that don't work. But yeah, excited to start using this at my events to do more wireless speaker solutions when it comes to, you know, backfills, side fills, maybe even start doing uh, ceremonies with stereo audio like I did at my wedding too. So anyways, leave in the comments down below what comments, questions, concerns you guys got. Hashtag squad if you're watching at this point, like the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know what other videos you wanna see too. Keep the market spinning. Peace.